Dartmoor is a vast upland region in southern Devon, covering 954 square kilometres. It's a dramatic and mysterious place. But it's not just the height of Dartmoor that makes it a special and popular destination. Indeed, if it was height you were after, then the lakes and peaks are much higher English places to visit. What's really captured people's imagination about Dartmoor is actually another thing. Or if you've got the time, over 160 other things. The tours. And I've come about two kilometres further into the moor to get a look at a fantastic example of one. Lint's Tour. Now, this is going to be the halfway point of my day's walk and uh, it being January, I don't want to get stuck up here in the dark. So, I'd better get a move on. So, as you can probably tell from the blazing sunshine and the fact that I'm wearing about three fewer layers than I was before, this is uh, not the same day that we filmed the rest of the documentary on, or at least the first half of it. And uh, that's because we defied our own advice and managed to get stuck up here in the dark last time. So uh, note to all you guys and to us for the future, this is a very doable walk in one day, but uh, filming a documentary about it in one day, not so doable. But at last, two months later, I can finally say this is Lint's tour. And well, it was worth the wait because it really is amazing. The word tour itself comes from the Old English, meaning bulging hill, and it certainly does bulge. As a matter of fact, you could kind of defies belief that it could have come about naturally, given how starkly it sticks out of the landscape, looking more like a man-made monolith than a natural formation. But it did actually come about naturally. Although, of course, to create something as extraordinary as this, you need an equally extraordinary process. And that process began with Dartmoor's ancient rainforests, forests of ginkgo, conifer and cycads. When these forests covered the moor, acidic water seeped down through the soil and into the cracks in the bedrock, chemically weathering the granite and beginning to sculpt Dartmoor into its modern, jagged shape. Through this process, a landscape in waiting was formed, which was eventually revealed when the forests and soil retreated. This means that looking around us, looking at Dartmoor, is actually like looking at a bedrock with all of the layers of soil above it removed which, if you ask me, is really quite cool. But this process, remarkable as it is, still doesn't go all the way to explain exactly why these tours are so stark and prominent. For that, we need to fast forward those last 64 million years to what, geologically speaking, is almost the present day and look at a feature of Britain's surprisingly recent history, glaciers. In the most recent ice age between 600,000 and 10,000 years ago, glaciers reached as far south as the Bristol Channel. And even though they didn't quite arrive at Dartmoor, their cold influence meant that the temperatures here could still be the equivalent of a modern Canadian winter. And it was these incredibly low but variable temperatures that enabled an immensely powerful and destructive process known as freeze-thaw weathering. What happens in this process is that water seeps into joints and cracks in rock and then freezes in the extreme cold. It then expands as it becomes ice, and as anyone who's left a beer in the freezer for too long knows, these expansion forces are incredibly powerful, breaking a glass bottle with ease and even strong enough to crack these rocks apart. 
This is the reason that you can see large areas and even entire hillsides covered in boulders around the tours as they've been pried away by the awesome power of the ice. As for the tours themselves though, with stronger joints than the surrounding rock, they remain as stubborn testaments to the strength of the magma forged rock from which they were born. Having seen Lint's tour, we're now heading back towards our starting point. But this certainly doesn't mean that our day's exploration is over. Now, as you can probably tell, I'm now going quite steeply downhill. And this is because our next destination, and indeed our route back, is an example of another immensely powerful natural force, which is carved deeply into Dartmoor's granite and worn great gorges on the face of the moor. I'm of course talking about rivers. The river that we're going to be following is the West Ockmont River. But this is only one of 25 rivers that drain Dartmoor. The reason that there are so many is firstly because of the height and size of the place, both meaning that it receives a lot of rain that can then flow downwards off the moor. But another key reason is the nature of Dartmoor's soil. Now we've already seen that often there is barely any soil to speak of over the top of the tough granite of Dartmoor. But where the soil does persist, it can take the form of peat. Now this soil is made up of decomposed, compressed plant matter, which most importantly for our purposes, is also very waterlogged. This layer of peat can be up to seven meters thick in some places. And given how much water it contains, it's a small wonder so many rivers are here draining it. Dartmoor being as it is, such an extensive raised area, rather than a slope with a definite downhill side, its rivers form a radial drainage pattern. That is to say that they all radiate out from a single central high point. Interestingly enough, Dartmoor is, in fact, a world famous example of this type of drainage pattern. So that's another claim to fame for the moor, besides fictional phosphorescent dogs. This drainage pattern was established when the granite was first uncovered, and it was after this, especially when the most recent ice age began, that the rivers, alongside the ice, began to really have their fun with Dartmoor. Because it wasn't glaciated here, rivers could still exist, but the extreme cold still meant that at various points they would be swollen by melting snows or loaded with ice jams or rock flows. These things all greatly increase a river's erosive power as the ice and rock in the water grind down and deepen the riverbed. Even hard granite eventually succumbs to forces like this, and so over many, many years, dramatic gorges, valleys and waterfalls have been carved out making Dartmoor much more interesting than the grassy plateau that it might outwardly seem to be. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this taste of the great outdoors, then please do like and subscribe for more.